Hi, welcome back to the Liberty or Death American Insurrection demonstration from Box to Lights. I'm going to kick off with a quick correction. Yeah, there's going to be a few of those, but if you spot anything else, let me know as we play through. There's a lot to learn here, but once you've got it down, it can be pretty straightforward. And also, I mean, I'm playing longhand here. I'm taking you through every single step, but you're going to find a lot of shortcuts as you play this game. For example, when you're trying to figure out which provinces to hit, instead of keep rolling for every one, you just count them up, count the resources, see if you need to roll or not roll, um, and whether you need to take a, a persuasion for the, for the bot, that kind of stuff. So you can do all that stuff in your head without having to actually go through all the actions. Anyway, first correction is this Patriot Militia here. Militia don't count as casualties, okay, you're counting forts and cubes. So, it's good to get them off the map. But yeah, just the forts and cubes, and obviously that means the Indian faction, they don't count at all. Now we're doing the non-player patriot, who's going to take a command, and they add a special activity. So they can't do event. Patriot resources greater than zero. Yes, they are. They're up at three, I think. Um, rebel cubes plus leader is greater than active royalist pieces in a space with both. Okay, so we're adding in the leader. Yeah, this is a yes this time. But it's only a yes in one place here in New York. Now there's an interesting conundrum here because the Indians can and will actually as non-player when defending they will activate all war parties um, except the last one which would take the force level of the royalists to one, two, three and a half. You count half for every active war party or militia if the Patriots um, and now we've only got three versus three and a half for the Patriots but of course the Indians won't do that until the battle has actually been initiated so the Patriots have paid their one resource the battle has been initiated so at the moment it's still three versus three when they're calculating what we call their force level we've also got to check to see if the leaders have any influence so for example Washington here has an ability says when they're defending, when the Patriots are defending, or when the Rebellion are defending, that reduced the loss level by, by one. So what would happen is if Washington was defending against, say, um, this attack, you count the force level, say the force level is three, that'll give them one dice, you roll one d3, that's the number of, that's the, the enemy loss level, they'd get to minus one from that. So I could take them down to zero. If there's less than three cubes, say two, two divided by three obviously is giving you less than one, so then the loss level is zero, uh, or you assume zero on the die roll. So as it stands, although they could battle, they're not going to, because the force level is not high enough. So what the logic says now is that the Patriots will rally instead. And the point here is that we're not going down the no and then trying to resolve this bit of logic. We're going in here to battle. We couldn't find a space where the force is high enough. We're going to go straight to rally. Okay, so we're going to skip this box. We're going straight down to rally. And it says we need to place a fort in each space with four plus patriot units and room first in cities within that in highest population. So four plus patriot units. Do you know what? I don't think there are any. Now again, this is interesting because they're not going to place a fort because there's no places with four plus patriot units. If they'd gone this way, they would only come in to rally if they could place forts. So this has kind of jumped us into the situation where we're placing militia. First at each patriot fort with no other rebellion pieces. There's only two forts and they do have rebellion pieces. Then if any continentals are available, there are continentals available, at the fort with the largest number of militia already which is Massachusetts. That's the only place where there's militia and a fort. So we've got a fort here, one militia. This is where we're going to first rally. And the number of militia we're going to place is equal to the population um, plus forts, three, minus any that are already there, okay? So there's already one here, so we can put another two militia in here. And that's just going to cost one resource because it's one per location. So we'll spend the resource. We'll mark the location as a selected space already, and then we'll add our two militia. 
then of all the spaces that we've currently selected, um, we've only selected one, but is it possible that we could have selected two at this stage? It could have been a fort with no other Patriot pieces. Uh, but in that space, we're going to replace all militia except one underground militia with a Continental. And this is kind of a free thing that you can do. Every time you rally, you can replace those militia with Continentals. So we're going to leave one underground militia. We'll always leave one, the, the I says. We'll take away this one active and this one underground. Replace them with two Continentals. And we'll move on. We've got, instantly a maximum of four spaces. So I'll just put these here to to remind us of that. Uh, now we're looking for the space with the most Patriot units already, which is either New York, which has three, and this one's already selected, or Charlestown, which also has three. Ah, oh, but one is a fort. What we're trying to do here is look for a space to build Continentals so we could then fortify it. So it's New York, and they're going to place just one militia here. Okay, you can only do the thing of adding militia up to the population plus forts where there is a fort. There's no fort here. The places where there's no fort you can only place one militia. So that's the second location selected and the second resource spent. And now we're looking for locations where they can change control. Now they can't hit any spaces with active support. So they can't rally in New York City. But they are going to try and hit cities first, and the ones with the highest population. But New York City's out. Remember, we can only place one militia. So we're looking for a city where adding one militia is going to change the control. And once more, I'm kind of making a little assumption here, and that is that control change includes changing it from uncontrolled to controlled, all right, as opposed to swipping it from, uh, say, Royalist control to Rebel control. So both these, Norfolk and Savannah, are eligible, which means each are going to get a militia. I've only got enough resources for one, but I can use Persuasion. So this is going to cost two resources, you see. I'll obviously put those into Rebel control. As I say, it's going to cost two resources, so we need to grab another resource back with some persuasion. And remember, to do that, they need to activate one of their underground militia where there's rebellion control. So Massachusetts is an option. And they get propaganda. This is Benjamin Rush. We're going to do that into three places as well. There's actually four places on the map. New Hampshire, Norfolk and Savannah. So it's going to choose two of those three. So it's, it's going to be random from here. That's a two, three. So next up is Savannah. There you go. They get a propaganda token too. Oliver Walcott. That's two of our three resources. And then the last one, that's a 5-2, so it's going to be New Hampshire next. If I follow the arrows, yeah, New Hampshire, that's too active there now. They get John Hancock, wow, this is really clocking up. We've also got one more, but then we spend it. Okay. You can very much see how the, the shape of the board is changing. I'm very much in favour of the bad guys. Okay. Oh, okay. When this card is turned up, stop and swap with the played card and conduct winter quarters round immediately. I guess that's good timing, and then perhaps we'll see out this episode, and perhaps see out the series, I think, with this Winter's Quarters, because right, we're a quarter of the way through the game now, and you can see I've got quite a lot of work to do, but I, I have been able, I think, to demonstrate quite a lot of the um, 
quite a lot of the rules. We don't have the French prep coming in, but it's only one more spot up here, so one more casualty. Maybe we'll see this let's, as we play this out. Let's see. There is a guide for the winter quarters round, and there's also a little track here you can use to track your progress through it. So victory check. No faction's got more than 10 more support or opposition. It's 10v6. So we move straight into the supply phase. This is where we get to see if British cubes, Patriot militia and Continentals, French regulars, they aren't in play if there were any though, and Indian war parties, if they're in supply, if they're not, we're going to have to pay for them. And as the British, potentially this is going to lose you some support as well. So let's have a look at the British first. The British are in supply if they're in a space with a fort or if they're in a city with British control. So these are in control. Plus Florida down here which has a fort, which means the ones without control, New York, that's not a city, Pennsylvania, Virginia, South Carolina. Wow, this is a tough decision because I've only got two resources, so I can only save two regions. Right. I think I'll save Pennsylvania at least. I've got one more I can play in. They're all population two. Oh, this is a t this is a shame. Didn't think that one through. I'm going to save that one. So now I've got a choice over Virginia and South Carolina. Now I can either ship them one space towards active opposition, which is going to be four on this track, or I can lose the cubes back to available resources. Let's take the hit on opposition, because I've got Tories here and they're good at moving. They're good at moving things back. Alright. Patriots are in supply in the same way. Except all colonies under rebellion control are also in supply. So, rebellion control, rebellion control, rebellion control. Yeah, these are good. And... North Carolina and Norfolk actually as well. So the only ones that aren't are these in New York City, these in New York Province and here in Quebec. Patriots have got two resources. Now, Patriots as a non-player would pay supply first where any locations if removing might lose control. Now, this one's uncontrolled down here and here they wouldn't lose control because they're in royalist control. So really it's where they're holding a place just by that one unit perhaps. So there's none like that. Now in the interest of maxing their options they're going to pay one resource for this one and these only got one militia each, uh, one militia one continental and for every two units rounded down means they wouldn't actually lose any so they don't need to pay anything so for the, these two they'll keep them out of supply. Alright, that's not going to lose anything. Okay, so that's just cost of Patriots one resource. And next up, the French won't do anything. And then the Indian nation. Incidentally, after the Treaty of Alliance, we can place forces here in the West Indies and you can have battles going on here and you've got to check for supply levels here as well. But for the Indians, if they don't have any villages on, then they're going to place a village in one Indian reserve, but they do. War parties are in supply if they're in a space with a village, or in an Indian reserve. So that's in supply, and that one's in supply, and that one's in supply. Any that aren't in supply, like this one up here in New York, would get moved to the nearest province with a village, but the non-player is going to pay for uh, one resource for the area if moving those out would lose control, which it absolutely would. So we're going to pay one resource to keep them in business, 
that exhausts the Indian resources. Maybe this one here is now out of supply and needs to retreat to the nearest village, which is here. Now we've done supply, we do resources, so we all take resources, and for the British that's one for every fort, one, two, remember we just do a quick check here, two, plus uh, the population for every controlled city. That's one, two, three, four. Not a huge amount. The Indians, it's half the number of villages rounded down, so that's just one. For the French, before the Treaty of Alliance, it's two times the number of um, squadron blockade markers in the west, so that's six for them. They're going up to a massive ten. And then for the Patriots, it's forts plus half the number of rebellion controlled spaces. So one, two, three, four. Like six rebellion controls, so that's three plus two forts, that's five for them. Up with us, it's six. Next, the support phase. This is where we get to uh, reward loyalty or opposition. British get to go first. We don't want to spend too many of resources, but it is money well spent. If there's a space with British regulars and one or more Tories, so we're looking at these two Quebec City. We can do a maximum of two per space. So I'd really like to move New York up to active support. It's going to cost two resources. There's no propaganda markers there, which is good. Philadelphia. Well, there's a prop here, so that's going to cost one to get rid of that. And then one to get rid of this. That will be four resources. That's not going to leave me much for the rest of the game. And the population is only one there. So I think I'm going to leave it. But that's two resources spent, and I've gained four, two times two, and support, takes me up to ten. Now for the Patriots, this is called Committee of Correspondence, as opposed to the British Reward Loyalty. But it's the same process, and this time you're going to be removing raid markers. Indians can place raid markers, we've not covered those actually. The other thing to add is that this committee of correspondence rules for the for the auto players, for the non-players, there's nothing in the rule book about it. Okay, it's on the FAQ. I'll, I'll drop a link in the description on YouTube below. But uh, basically, all it says is go for the raids. They're going to spend as much resources as they can, exhausting their resources if, if necessary, to push the opposition up as high as possible. First, let's identify all the spaces where this is going to happen. So it's rebellion controlled places with Patriot forces. So here, this one's active oppose already times two, so that one's not going to move. One here, and one here. That's everywhere. It's actually eight because they can only do a maximum of two per location, remember? That's two, two. Takes us to Philadelphia first, but I should say they're going to go for the ones where the largest change in opposition is available first. So anything with support, let's put one here. Let's find those first. Yeah, good point. So these are all passive oppose, passive oppose, passive. That one's neutral, so that one's going to get one. That one's passive oppose, so it's actually going to do these two first. So it's going to be active oppose here, then one to remove that, one to put that in, that's two, that's the maximum two. So that's four resources spent. Six down to two. Okay, so we've got two resources left. We've removed one support and added one, two, three support. One, two, three. It's looking dangerous, and I think we're going to add two support more. Yeah, so we're going to go up to 19. The question is where? There are 10 more ahead now. And we're starting at 2 2 Pennsylvania, which I think is going to take us to Charlestown. So one here, 
and the next one to one starts us at Quebec Province or New York. So Quebec, New York, New Hampshire. New Hampshire's next. Right up here. Okay. So that's our two support and our final two resources spent. This isn't the command, so there's no persuasion going on here. But we're in dire straits for the next time. There's a gay men check here just to say if you're at gay men now, this is where you're gonna finish. This is the end of the fourth winter quarters, but we're not, so we're moving into redeployment, leader change, leader redeploy, British release date, lower FNI. That's the French naval intervention. And we'll talk about those next time as we start to look a little bit at those leaders and start the next era and watch those French troops come into play.